We often think about creativity as a finished product, something that is already done, a book, a movie, an advertisement, but creativity is really a process, a very tedious process that um, is often invisible and starts in your imagination and that's what I'm here to talk about tonight. So I am the EVP for business development at a creative consultancy here in Manhattan called Science House. Um, Science House is um, founded by James Dorash, who's an entrepreneur, an investor, and an inventor named on almost 600 patents, which is really great for brainstorming because the heart of inventing is discovering something that is novel and non-obvious, and that's what we do in, in all of our work at Science House. Um, we bring together, uh, we call it cognitive diversity, we're bringing together teams of people who would normally never interact with each other in a way that is novel and non-obvious and results in some really groundbreaking um, ideas. And Science House was originally built by Abraham Lincoln's son for his twin daughters. We have one of the twin daughters ha halves of the houses. And the brainstorming at Science House takes place in the imagination room. and writing on the walls of the imagination room is itself an act of making the invisible visible because you're taking an idea that's in your mind and you're making it so that someone else can see what it is and maybe even collaborate with you on the long process of making that idea real. So we love that process. Um, I started my career as a beat reporter, um, attending town board meetings, zoning board meetings, school board meetings, uh, any kind of municipal meeting that you would think, uh, that you could possibly think of. And I did this for a long time, and I realized um, the cycles of how people react to things, how um, civic life unfolds, how it's governed, and um, I started to really understand that there's a lot of invisible things happening around us all the time, um, in, including you know, when you turn on the faucet and the water appears, it didn't just magically appear. Somebody's, many somebody's had to make the decision about how to do that. And my job was to take this complex information and turn it into a really simple story that the people who were affected by this could um, understand. I was inspired to become a journalist by someone named Dan Eldon. This is a picture of Dan Eldon shown here. Uh, when he was young, he did some really incredible things, including documenting his adventures uh, with the likes of um, Christopher Nolan, who later went on to direct Memento and Inception. He was surrounded and, in fact, spearheaded this incredible creativity and really was the master of making the invisible visible. And, um, inspired me to become a journalist. Dan was killed in Somalia in 1993, and his mother, Kathy, um, made the decision, amazing decision, to posthumously publish his art in a book called The Journey is the Destination. And it was, in fact, that book that really changed my life and my career. And Kathy is actually with us tonight, and she is a living example of what I'm talking about, because eight years ago, I edited an early draft of her memoir, and it just today, literally today, got published. It's called In the Heart of Life. And um, coming out with this book, again, a published uh, product, there's a long process that begins in your imagination. And this is a picture of your imagination. Um, some researchers at Dartmouth just announced this week that they think they understand uh, where the imagination is actually located in your brain, which is really exciting because while your imagination seems nebulous and invisible, in fact, it is tangible and it's happening right now. And these are the parts of the brain that work together to enable us as human beings to connect things, to make, um, take ideas and experiences and things we've seen and heard and put them together in, in new and novel ways. And I've always been fascinated by how the brain works. And um, in fact, after I saw The Journey is the Destination, Dan's book, I spent uh, six months interviewing neuroscientists about how much I could change and still be me. And in that process, I learned a lot about myself and a lot about my brain. And today, I still work with um, different companies and organizations on um, the brain. And one of them is called Memory Layer. 
and we make messages memorable uh, based on what we know about how the brain remembers. And you can see how that would be attractive to um, advertising companies and, and, and I mean, advertising agencies and brands. And when we first started collaborating with agencies and brands, one thing I noticed is that there was this division between the creatives and everybody else. But I think I agree with Andy Warhol that being good in business is the most fascinating kind of art. And as soon as a group of people come together to tackle a business challenge um, and to ask the right questions, they are all creative. And they better be all creative because the final product suffers when anyone sees themselves as not creative, much like the people on the town board or the zoning board. If they don't see themselves as creative, then they're willing to push a difficult decision off to someone else. And creativity is all about problem solving. So, in order to see creativity everywhere, you have to look with new eyes. And so a woman named Alexandra Horowitz, a really fantastic researcher, just published a book called On Looking. And she took walks around the city with 11 different experts, all of whom saw the city with different eyes. And some of them were very unusual. Um, there was a baby, and the baby just sees shapes and colors, and she realized that was very different in a dog. And one of the experts was a geologist, and the geologist sees millions of stories in the stone, for example. So Central Park to us looks like beautiful lush green surrounded by you know, artificial buildings, but in reality the buildings are natural and the park is engineered. So I would leave you with this idea. When you leave here tonight and you walk down the street, think about all the invisible creativity that made it possible for this city to exist so that you could exist here, so that you could do your creative work collaboratively with everyone else. And while your imagination rests in your brain, it also goes outward in concentric circles and includes everyone here, everyone in the world, and who knows what else there is in the cosmos, but we're all part of this, and we're all part of this creativity that's everywhere. Thank you very much. Have a great night.